Hello students of Dynamics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, live for you this time. Here's a little video talking about the right hand rule. I thought that might be helpful to be right here in front of the screen, show you how we're working the right hand rule on these various systems. So what we're going to look at today is a body in fixed axis rotation, as well as a body over here. This is going to be a four bar linkage, it's actually four members which are all pinned together. So we'll go through those one by one. So for the fixed axis rotation body here, talking about the right hand rule, let's start with the application of the right hand rule for the angular velocity. Okay, so if we have an omega, and this is going to be omega of, uh, call this omega of ABC, because those are all three points that are on this body, then we can use the right hand rules. We wrap our fingers around, the fingertips go in the direction of this arrowhead. We get a negative k hat for this right hand rule. So a negative k hat. Now we're assuming that we're using a Cartesian x y coordinate system. Just a little reminder here as we talk about i hats, j hats, and k hats. Your i hat is a unit vector along the x axis, and your J hat is the unit vector along the y axis, okay? And the K hat basically is going to come out of the board. So anything with a positive K hat is going to be basically around an axis coming out of the board. This omega that we had right here is in the negative K hat because my thumb is pointing into the board, my right hand thumb, okay? So that's one application of the right hand rule. Another application of the right hand rule is we can draw some position vectors. Say we want to find the velocity up here of point A. We can write this position vector either calling it R of A. We could also call this R of A relative to B. Either one of those would be an appropriate designation for that position vector going from B up to A. Keep in mind in fixed axis rotation that we always start our vectors, our position vectors at the fixed axis and go out to the other points. So we know that the velocity out here at A has to be perpendicular to that R vector. And we know that because it's based upon the relationship that V vector is equal to omega vector cross R vector. And so we know that equation, we know that all the vectors in this equation are perpendicular to each other. Okay, V has to be perpendicular to both omega and also R. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do the right hand rule here for uh, this cross product. So first, our omega here is going to be in the negative k hat. It's going into the board. Now I'm going to show a couple different ways we can take the right hand rule. The way that I like to do it is I like to slide my fingers along this first vector and cross them or curl them into the second vector. Okay, so my fingers are going into the board. My R vector is going upwards, and so I try to curl my fingers upwards, so that doesn't work. I need to turn my hand over. Now they'll curl upwards. My thumb is gonna go to the right. Therefore, I know that VA is going to the right here, so this is gonna be VA, perpendicular to R. And what you'll notice is that the omega and this velocity are working in harmony, right? This body is rotating in that direction, so this point velocity has to go with it as well. Now, the other way we can take the right hand rule is with our three finger right hand rule. If you hold all three of your thumb, your index finger, and your first finger perpendicular to one another. And so in this one, there's two different ways to take the right hand rule. One of those is to put your thumb along the first vector, cross that into your index finger is the second vector, and your middle finger will point in the direction um, of the um, actual cross product term over here. So let's go ahead and do that one. So my thumb goes into the board, my index finger goes upwards, and my middle finger goes over to the right. Okay, the other way we can use the right hand rule if you want to is you can cross your index finger into your middle finger and your thumb will be the term that's over here on the left hand side. So let's try that one. Index finger goes into the board, R vector goes up, my thumb goes to the right. Okay, so two different ways of using a three finger right hand rule. One way of the slide curl, both of those work for VA. So let's go ahead and look at that also here. Now you can actually see my face because I'm right-handed so I can't get off the screen. And so let's do the same thing here. We'll also talk about instantaneous centers of zero velocity. So let's say that the omega of ED is going to be once again negative from the right-hand rule as I wrap my fingers around there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to map out all the rest of the velocities on this body using the right-hand rule and using the instantaneous centers of zero velocity. 
So first of all, as we think about this body DE, it's in fixed axis rotation, so I can call this here R of E. So being in fixed axis rotation, I know that this omega and the velocity here at point E have to be going in a harmonious direction, and so that's going to be going here to the right, so we can say that is going to be VE. We also know that it's going in that direction because we can take the cross product right here. Once again, um, omega is negative from the right hand rule. So I'm going to do the slide curl gives me VE. Now, as we look at point F, it's also in fixed axis rotation here about point G. We could add this position vector if we wanted to. Here's my absolute position vector R of F. So I know at this point in the problem that my velocity of f has to be perpendicular to that position vector. I don't know if it's going up to the left or down to the right yet, but I do know it is um, going to be along in that line somewhere. So in order to help me find that, I want to find the instantaneous center of zero velocity, okay, the ICZV of this member EF. Now keep in mind ICZVs are essentially any point that is a zero velocity at the instant we're solving this problem. So it turns out there's also an ICZV, ICZV of DE that's right here. So we can say this is the ICZV of member DE. And additionally here for FG, this would be the ICZV for FG. Okay, so fixed axis rotation are always going to be an ICZV. Additionally, we're going to have an ICZV for here for EF. Now, the rule we're going to use is the non-parallel velocity rule for ICZVs. If you look at point E, this velocity at the, of the pin coming off of DE is essentially the exact same velocity we have of the same pin on member EF, okay? So it's not equal and opposite like it is for forces and frames and machines, but it's the exact same motion, same velocity, same change in acceleration, same normal acceleration, all those different pieces. So what we want to do with our extension lines is we want to extend them perpendicular to the velocities. So perpendicular to that velocity is going to be somewhere along that line, okay? So that's extension line one to find my ICZV. Extension line two, perpendicular to this line, is going to look like this. Oh, we're come all the way down here, right toward the bottom of the screen. And so what we find is this intersection point between these two bot between these two lines. This is going to be my ICZV of member EF. All right, so ICZVs act like a point of fixed axis rotation. So what we can really do is kind of assume or think about essentially this triangle that includes EF is going to be pinned here at this point. And so as we take a look at velocity VE, we know that VE is moving in a negative right-hand rule direction from rotation, right? It's going to rotate that body. And so we could add it down here if we wanted to. We could say, well, our omega of EF has to be going in a negative right-hand rule direction in order for that VE to be matching up as well. Now I could also transfer the same omega up here to this body EF, and I could draw it in this direction. I could also draw it if I wanted to, so that's the negative. Also negative would be coming up in this direction. Okay, so all of these would be representations of W, excuse me, omega, all of these would be representations of omega EF. Now the last thing that I can do with this piece of information, if I know that this body here is rotating in a negative right-hand rule direction, then I can also find over here the velocity of F. What I need to do to find that point is I come back to my ICZV, right? Remember that essentially here for finding VE or VF, I'm going to cross the omega of this body into a position vector from this point up to point E, negative, and then also from this point up to point F. And so this whole body is swinging around this point, it's going to turn out that my VF is going to be going down to the right over there, once again matching up with the motion of VE, matching with the motion of this angular velocity, resulting in V sub F. And the final thing we could add is that our omega of FG also is going to be negative from the right hand rule in order to create a velocity vector here, VF. And we can always cross check that with the right hand rule again. So we have a negative omega, right? So negative omega 
into this RF is going down to the right with three fingers. We'll go ahead and do both me methodologies. So first the thumb into the index finger, thumb into the board, index finger along the blue line, V sub F down to the right. Now index finger into middle finger, index finger to the board, middle finger goes up along the blue, um, VF goes down to the right. So three different ways to do the right hand rule. I hope that this was helpful in getting you to think about how you use the right hand rule for dynamics and these different cross products that we're taking. And I hope you're having a great day.